Welcome to G-Fun Facts Online. Today, we're diving into the world of high-performance materials, where engineering meets a revolution. We're talking about titanium super alloys, the backbone of modern jets and advanced medical implants. But we're not talking about the old ways of forging them with hammers and heat. We're talking about building them, layer by tiny layer, with lasers and electron beams, in a process that's rewriting the rules of metallurgy, 3D printing. This isn't just a new way to make parts, it's a way to create materials with properties we've never seen before. So let's explore the dawn of this new era and understand the science behind 3D printed titanium. The journey starts with two primary methods that act as the architects of these new metals, powder bed fusion and directed energy deposition. Let's start with powder bed fusion or PBF. Imagine a very shallow box filled with a fine layer of titanium alloy powder, as thin as a human hair. A high-energy source, usually a powerful laser, then draws a cross-section of the final object onto this powder bed, melting and fusing the particles together. The platform then drops down a fraction of a millimeter, a fresh layer of powder is spread over the top, and the laser goes again, fusing the new layer to the one beneath it. This process repeats thousands upon thousands of times until a solid, complex metal part emerges from the powder bed. This specific method is called Selective Laser Melting, or SLM. It's renowned for creating parts with incredible detail and precision. The key to its magic and its challenges is the speed. The laser's heat is incredibly intense and localized, and the cooling that follows is astronomically fast on the order of a million degrees Celsius per second. This rapid solidification is what forges the unique properties of the metal, but we'll get more into that in a moment. To prevent the hot reactive titanium from catching fire or getting contaminated, the whole process happens in a sealed chamber filled with an inert gas, like argon. A sibling technology to SLM is electron beam melting, or EBM. It works on a similar layer-by-layer -layer principle, but instead of a laser, it uses a high-energy beam of electrons. The big difference is that EBM operates in a vacuum and at very high temperatures. The entire powder bed is preheated to several hundred degrees, sometimes up to a thousand degrees Celsius. This preheating is crucial. It reduces the extreme temperature differences between the hot molten spot and the surrounding material. This minimizes internal stress and dramatically lowers the risk of the part cracking during the build, which is a huge advantage when working with more brittle high-performance alloys. The second major category of 3D printing titanium is Directed Energy Deposition, or DED. Instead of building a part inside a bed of powder, DED processes melt the material as it's being deposited. Think of it like a highly advanced robotic hot glue gun, but for metal. A nozzle, often on a multi-axis robotic arm, shoots a stream of either metal powder or wire into a melt pool created by a laser or an electric arc. The most prominent dead method for titanium is called Wire Arc Additive Manufacturing, or WAAM. As the name suggests, it uses an electric arc, just like in welding, to melt a titanium wire. WAAM is a beast of a process. It can deposit several kilograms of material per hour, making it perfect for building massive components, like the structural ribs for an airplane wing or large chassis parts. The parts are built near their final shape and then machined down to the precise dimensions. Because the process is slower and uses more energy, the microstructures are different from the powder bed methods, but WAAM produces fully dense parts right out of the machine. So we have these amazing machines building parts layer by layer, but what's actually happening inside the metal at a microscopic level? This is where the true revolution lies. The metallurgy of 3D printed titanium is fundamentally different from its traditionally made cousins. Let's take the most common 3D printed titanium alloy, ti 6 al 4 volts, which stands for titanium, with 6% aluminum and 4% vanadium. When the laser or electron beam hits the powder, 
it creates a tiny pool of molten metal. As the beam moves on, this pool cools and solidifies with incredible speed. In laser-based systems, the cooling is so fast that the metal atoms don't have time to arrange themselves into their preferred, stable, crystalline structure. Instead, they are flash-frozen into a different, highly strained state. This structure is a fine, needle-like crystal known as alpha-prime martensite. This martensitic structure is incredibly strong and hard. In fact, as printed Ti-6 Al-4 volts is often significantly stronger than its wrought counterpart. But this strength comes at a price. The material is also quite brittle, meaning it can fracture without much warning. It has high strength but low ductility. Another fascinating effect of the layer-by-layer -layer process is how the grains of the metal form. Heat naturally flows downwards through the previously deposited and solidified layers. This directional heat flow encourages the metal crystals, or grains, to grow upwards, perpendicular to the layers. This results in long, columnar grains that can stretch across many, many layers. These elongated grains, combined with the specific orientation of the martensite needles inside them, create something called anisotropy. This is just a fancy word meaning the material's properties are not the same in all directions. It might be stronger when you pull on it along the build direction, but weaker and more brittle if you pull on it from the side. It's similar to the grain in a piece of wood. It splits easily along the grain but is very strong across it. In processes like electron beam melting or wire arc, where there's more heat involved or deliberate preheating, something else happens. As each new hot layer is deposited, it effectively heat treats the layers beneath it. This repeated thermal cycling causes the brittle martensite to break down and transform into a more stable, tougher microstructure. This is a huge advantage, as it produces a part that's already less stressed and more ductile right out of the printer. Of course, this cutting-edge technology is not without its challenges. The complex physics at play can introduce defects that could compromise the integrity of a critical component. One of the most common issues is porosity. This means tiny microscopic voids or pores inside the metal. Sometimes, these are caused by gas bubbles getting trapped in the molten pool, like the bubbles in a carbonated drink. Other times, they are caused by a lack of fusion, where the laser or electron beam didn't provide enough energy to fully melt and fuse the powder particles, leaving tiny gaps between them. These pores are a big problem because they act as stress concentrators. Imagine a tiny crack that's already present in the material. When the part is under load, stress flows around these pores, concentrating at their edges and making it much easier for a fatigue crack to start and grow, leading to eventual failure. Another major hurdle is residual stress. As each layer is rapidly heated, melted, and then cooled, it contracts. This contracting layer pulls on the solidified layer beneath it. This process repeats layer after layer, building up immense internal stresses within the part. These stresses can be so powerful that they can distort or warp the component or even cause it to crack right on the build plate. Finally, there's the issue of surface roughness. As built parts, especially from powder bed systems, have a grainy surface because of partially melted powder particles clinging to the outside. This rough surface isn't just a cosmetic issue. Each tiny bump and valley can act as a potential starting point for a fatigue crack. So how do engineers turn these strong but brittle and potentially flawed printed parts into reliable components for jet engines and medical implants? The answer lies in post-processing. These finishing steps are just as critical as the printing itself. The first and most essential step for almost all 3D printed titanium is heat treatment. This is far more sophisticated than just sticking it in an oven. The part is placed in a vacuum or inert gas furnace to prevent any contamination. A stress relief anneal, performed at a relatively low temperature, is used to relax those internal residual stresses 
without significantly changing the fine-grained microstructure. This prevents warping and cracking. But the real transformation happens with further heat treatments at higher temperatures. For our TIE 6 AL 4 volts part, heating it to a temperature just below what's called its beta transis point causes the brittle needle-like martensite to decompose. It recrystallizes into a much more ductile and tough structure, a fine interwoven mixture of what metallurgists call alpha and beta phases. This process dramatically improves the material's elongation and ability to withstand impacts, though it usually trades a small amount of the ultimate tensile strength. By precisely controlling the temperature and cooling rate, engineers can tailor the final microstructure and thus the properties for a specific application. While heat treatment refines the microstructure, another process is needed to fix the physical defects. This is called hot isostatic pressing, or HIP. It's a game changer for critical components. The process involves subjecting the part to both high temperature and extremely high pressure simultaneously. Imagine putting the part in a pressure cooker that heats it to over 900 degrees Celsius, while also squeezing it from all sides with an inert gas at a pressure of over 100 megapascals. That's about a thousand times atmospheric pressure, the equivalent of being a kilometer deep in the ocean. This combination of heat and pressure effectively closes and welds shut any internal pores or lack of fusion voids, making the part almost perfectly dense. Eliminating these internal defects dramatically improves the material's fatigue life and makes its properties reliable and consistent. The HIP cycle also acts as a heat treatment, further refining the microstructure. So after all this, the precise printing, the careful heat treatment and the intense pressure of HIP, what do we have? We have a material with unleashed performance, and as printed TIE 6 L4 volts part might have a tensile strength over 1200 megapascals, stronger than its forged equivalent, but with ductility of less than 10%. After post-processing, the strength might be slightly lower, but the ductility can more than double, achieving a balance of properties that meets the incredibly strict standards for aerospace and medical use. This technology is revolutionizing our world. The biggest adopter is the aerospace industry. The ability to create lightweight, incredibly complex titanium parts is a dream come true for aircraft engineers. General Electric famously uses 3D printed fuel nozzles in its LEAP jet engines. These complex parts, printed as a single piece, were previously made from 20 individual components welded together. GE also prints the low-pressure turbine blades for these engines from a titanium aluminide alloy. These blades are significantly lighter than the nickel superalloys they replace contributing to massive improvements in fuel efficiency. We're talking about saving hundreds of kilograms on a single engine, which translates to millions of dollars in fuel savings and lower carbon emissions over the life of an aircraft. The medical field is another major beneficiary. Titanium is biocompatible, meaning our bodies don't reject it. Additive manufacturing allows for the creation of patient-specific implants. Imagine a hip replacement or a spinal cage perfectly matched to your anatomy. Better yet, these implants can be designed with complex, porous lattice structures that mimic human bone. This encourages osseointegration, where your own bone actually grows into the implant, making it a permanent, stable part of your body. This leads to better patient outcomes and faster recovery times. And it's not just in the air or in our bodies. In motorsports and high-end automotive, 3D printed titanium is used for lightweight, high-performance parts like chassis components and exhaust systems, where every gram saved counts. The journey of 3D printed titanium is far from over. This is a dynamic, rapidly evolving field. Researchers are now designing brand new titanium alloys, specifically formulated for the 3D printing process alloys that are more resistant to cracking and have even better properties. Machines are becoming smarter with in-situ monitoring and feedback control that can detect and correct defects in real time as the part is being built. 
and powerful computer models are allowing engineers to simulate and predict the final microstructure and properties before a single grain of powder is ever melted. In conclusion, the intersection of additive manufacturing and titanium metallurgy is more than just an industrial advancement. It's a paradigm shift. By harnessing the unique physics of 3D printing, we are no longer just fabricating parts. We are architecting materials from the micro level up. The ability to control the internal structure, eliminate defects, and unlock an unprecedented combination of strength, weight, and performance ensures that 3D printed titanium super alloys will continue to drive innovation for decades to come, taking us higher in the skies, healing our bodies, and pushing the boundaries of what is possible. Thanks for listening to G Fun Facts Online.